Yeah. Good morning. Welcome to our third avian home adventure. Today we are live with Matthias Engelman who works in the rehabilitation hospital and we are going to be talking about um, a topic that comes up often this time of year and that is um, nestlings and babies and all the things babies. So Matthias is going to um, talk us through some things and then we're actually going to go in um, and see some of the baby owls that we have in the hospital currently. Yay, so good morning. My name is Matthias and yes, let's talk about raptor nestlings. So this is prime great horned owl nesting season and in fact they're already fledging almost. Um, and as well as bald eagles are on the nests right now. A little bit later, a month from now, we'll probably be seeing barred owls and red-shouldered hawks, followed by red-tailed hawks and kestrels and some of the other species. But let's focus on great horned owls for now because they're out there right now. Um, before we go into this cage and have you look at these babies, a couple things to think about is um, our first choice when we get a call about a baby owl is not to bring it here right away. We'll talk about that more in more detail, but first choice is to try to leave it with their parents. We call it re-nesting. If we can find a nest, and if the parents are there, and if the babies are healthy, we try to get them back in their own nest. Or, as, an, as a backup plan, put them in a foster nest. Same species, uh, maybe a nest that already has one young that can take a second one. Um, so what you're seeing here today is not our first choice. We couldn't find a nest or they came from very far away or something happened to the nest. So unfortunately we can't take them back. So we're gonna raise them here as best we can and then release them back into the wild. Um, some of the things we're using here on site are real live adult owls to help us raise them. So we don't wanna be the one raising these babies because they would imprint on humans, which is something we wanna avoid. So I'm gonna show you what we use to help us stay hidden. Um, so for instance, we have camouflage that will wear so they can't see us. That includes even down to the gloves so they can't see a hand, a human hand feeding them. We use puppets like this great horned owl puppet made from an unfortunately deceased owl, but he comes in very handy because he can deliver food now. And he's pretty realistic uh, and that, makes, makes, that ensures that the babies will grow up fairly natural. Um, this is all in addition to using that live adult owl that you'll see in a minute so that they have contact not only with an adult but ideally they also have contact with siblings. They should never grow up alone. They should be in a group just like they would in the wild so they can preen each other. A little bit of tussling going on maybe here and there but they, they need to interact socially with, with other birds. So let's go take a look at these owls. We're gonna have to be quiet in there but Kate's gonna put the camera right up into some observation areas so you can see the adult and the babies. If you guys have questions, um, feel free to post them. Once we come out from where the babies are, um, we're happy to answer them. But like Matias said, when we're in here, we're gonna stay nice and quiet. And there's the adult. We have two groups of babies right here. Don't in background so they can see each other.
So after you recover from that cuteness, the floofy cuteness, <laughs> we can ask some more questions. Um, so Matthias, we have a question. Um, what was that clacking noise that they were doing? Right, so that's a defensive sound they make. They, and the adults do that as well. They, they clack their upper and lower beak together, which are very sharp keratin covering bone. <laughs> Um, so that's how they tell someone back off. This is me you're talking to. I'm a great horned owl. So that's Which, a great thing we want to see. We want to know that they know they're a great horned owl. We're a human. We are the enemy, so to speak. It's a great sign. Good. And what do you have in your hand? Ah, I have breakfast. <laughs> so we didn't get to see that in the cage, but food is really important for these guys. Um, First of all, they need huge quantities of food. If you saw the adult owl in there, that was Maddie, the foster mom. Um, she might eat three or four of those a day. She gets fed at night. These babies who are about in the three to five week age range, so they're still pretty young, but they're almost, you know, they're almost as big as the adult already. Um, they could easily eat 10 of these mice a day because they are right now in the process of growing every single flight feather they're growing bones, muscles, all kinds of tissues. So they're using incredible amounts of calories. And it has to be the right kind of food. So steak and potatoes wouldn't work. They need whole animals. This is what mom and dad will bring them. And they'll eat the whole thing. They can literally swallow a mouse like this whole, even at this age, which is pretty funny to watch, actually. Uh, and all that's left then is going to be a pellet, which some of you have probably seen before or maybe dissected in school. Um, but they eat a bunch of these. So we feed them as much as they possibly can eat. We want to see some leftovers every day to make sure they're getting enough. And they know how to eat on their own. It's not something that mom and dad have to show them or teach them at this age. They know exactly what they need to do. Uh, but mom is there to watch and interact with them. Maddie, you saw, is actually separated by them with those bars because we've never used her successfully. This is her first season as a foster mom. So we're not 100% sure how she reacts most adults in mommy mode and she definitely is she's laid two eggs already this year most adults should um, take care of babies almost immediately there might be a little transition period so we're kind of going through that right now to see how she reacts um we have a question how old do the babies have to be before they can fly and leave um, their parents yes yeah, so they actually leave the nest long before they can fly all those babies you saw in there are probably to the age what we call branchers three to five weeks old and they wouldn't be standing in the nest anymore they're already jumping out onto the branches that's what I call branchers um, out on the tree um, by this age they're not able to fly yet they have some flight feathers they're not fully developed yet by eight weeks they can fly not very well but they can fly uh, but great horned owls stay with their parents for several months after they leave the nest they're one of the longest periods among all the raptors as far as dependency is concerned um, so we have another question, um, are any of those owls injured and if not, when will you put them back out into the wild? Right, so uh, I know we have some injured baby owls right now. They uh, suffered an in one of them in fact suffered an injured wing and a leg fracture when it fell from the tree to nest. Um, those particular ones I don't think have any injuries. So the problem is we don't know where their nests are. Uh, some of them came from pretty far away. For instance, two of them came from the Raleigh area. So it's unpractical for us to take them back to their own nest, assuming we could find them. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to look out for foster parents to see if we can put them in another nest. Um, but it could be that if we can't find enough foster parents, we will raise them here. They'll go into a larger cage eventually where they can fly and learn how to practice, build up some flight muscles and I can actually practice catching live prey. So as you can imagine, feeding all of these babies, and you talked about how they can eat 10 to 15 mice in a day, it can get pretty expensive. Oh yeah. Um, if you're watching this live, you'll notice there is a donate button on the bottom. So if you have the means, um, any amount is super helpful to these guys, especially at this time, um, to be feeding all of these babies. Um, like Matthias mentioned, we try to get them back out into the wild as soon as possible. Um, but in the meantime, they are under our care and we will be feeding them. So if you, if you can and will, please uh, make some donations to these floofy babies. Um, 
Do they have a large variety of sounds that they make? They make a couple different sounds. You heard the clacking. They also start hooting at this age a little bit. They're not very good at it yet. They have to practice that. Uh, they also make a food begging noise, which is really important. Uh, so the parents will clue in on that in the wild. When there's a baby out there somewhere hungry, especially if he's wandered away from his nest, maybe sort of flown, climbed into another tree nearby, uh, they can call in their parents with that call and the parents will know, okay, this one's hungry, I gotta deliver food. And we'll use that same call here to determine to hear that call aimed at us. We wanna hear it aimed at another owl. Um, speaking of, are baby owls more aggressive than adults? I wouldn't think so, no. I think it's the adults at this stage. This will be the only time when adults are truly aggressive. You know, in general, wild owls will try to fly away from people. Uh, and this would relate to being aggressive towards people. The only time adults would be aggressive is if you are approaching a wild nest. Literally, maybe a tree climber getting ready to climb a tree and cut a limb because it's rotten or something. That's when they become very defensive um, and start swooping at people. Otherwise, they will always try to get away. Same thing for the babies, as much as they can anyway. No, baby this age can't really fly. Where is he gonna go? He would have to jump from a tree and bail out of a tree. Um, we have a question. Do you only take baby owls from North Carolina? <laughs> uh, we get owls from South Carolina. We're pretty close to York County and other South Carolina counties, so we take them from there as well. But if we get calls from other states, surrounding states, we will usually try to find another raptor center or wildlife center that is closer and can handle them. Um, and probably the most commonly asked question um, that we were going to wait until the end uh, to ask, so we'll go ahead and do that now and wrap things up. What do we do if we find a baby bird in general bird. in our yard? Yes, so the, our first instinct I know is always want, going to want to be rescue that baby, but you should resist that urge as much as you can. First things first is I would say observe and see what exactly is happening. Now if the baby is truly injured, it may need help. If there's an obvious injury to it, there's blood somewhere or something is, a wing is hanging down. But the majority of babies are going to be healthy and so start looking for a nest and adults and siblings, looking and listening. Uh, and you'll be surprised what you might find. Things that you haven't paid attention to before, all of a sudden you realize, wow, there's an owl nesting in my yard and I didn't know it. So look around, pay attention, watch from a distance because the adults are gonna be kind of shy. They're not necessarily gonna come right up to the baby if you're nearby. They may swoop on some occasion and that's something to kind of keep in mind. Um, so watch the babies from a distance. Um, if it's in a safe place, um, you might even want to leave it there. These owl babies at this age can actually climb trees very well, and barred owls are known for that, which we haven't shown you today. But barred owls can literally climb a tree vertical straight up without being able to fly. So um, some of these babies do need help, but that doesn't necessarily mean our help. Uh, you can help them. Some of these just need to be put on a tree branch, eight feet off the ground because they're vulnerable to predation from cats and dogs and other things. Some of them have to go back to their own nest, and that means getting somebody who's safe you know, and, and experienced in climbing a tree, maybe an arborist, a local arborist or a tree company that's willing to help. Some of them can have an alternate nest put up. Um, we do this all the time. If we can't get to the existing nest, but we know the parents are there, we can put a new nest in the same tree. Now think about a laundry basket, something that's pretty sturdy, but it drains water and it can be attached to a tree, that same nest tree, maybe 10 feet, 15 feet off the ground, lined with nest material, uh, dry leaves and things like that. And you put that baby in there and then watch from a distance and nine out of 10 times, the adults will be there within a couple hours feeding it again. They can't smell, it's a common misconception. As soon as I've touched this baby, it will have to be rescued. It's not true, most birds cannot smell so just you touching the baby has no impact at all. So you can safely put this baby back in a tree nest and watch from a distance again. If you're right there next to it, nothing will happen except the baby will sc scream for food or squawk for food, whatever it does. But if you watch from a distance, maybe from inside your house, the adults should come back. Uh, when in doubt, always call a wildlife rehabilitator in your area first before you interfere, just to make sure you get the best advice locally. Fabulous. Thank you so much, Matthias. Um, if you have 
further questions, um, put them in the comments and we will be happy um, to answer them. And thank you to everybody that has donated and thank you guys all for tuning in. We'll see you guys tomorrow.